Today's New York Times reports that the Israeli bombardment has, and I quote, this is from the New York Times, damaged 17 hospitals and clinics in Gaza. The bombardment has wrecked its only coronavirus test laboratory, sent fetid wastewater into the streets, and broke water pipes serving at least 800,000 people. Sewage systems inside Gaza have been destroyed. A desalination, desalination plant that helped provide fresh water to a quarter of a million people in the territory is offline. Dozens of schools have been damaged or closed, forcing some 600,000 students to miss classes. Some 72,000 Gazans have been forced to flee their homes, end quote. Jess Gonham, a professor of psychiatry at the University of California, San Francisco, who specializes in the psychological effects of armed conflict on children, told USA Today, and I quote, quote, what children in Gaza are exposed to on a regular basis exceeds anything, anything that any children anywhere else in the world experience. There's basically no place to go for these children. They are unable to escape, end of quote. When you put people under this sort of continued intense pressure with no hope for a better future, you cannot be surprised when violence erupts. Indeed, three years ago, in May of 2018, I wrote a letter with 12 of my colleagues urging the Trump administration to do more to alleviate the ongoing humanitarian crisis in Gaza. In that letter, we cited Israeli defense officials who were warning that if the crisis was not addressed, it could lead to yet another eruption of violence. Why didn't we take notice then? And when this latest war ends, will the United States once again turn away? Will we consign those children once again to the horrible conditions they are forced to live under today. And I would hope that my colleagues appreciate that we must not do that. Let us be very clear. No one is arguing that Israel or any government does not have the right to self-defense and the responsibility to protect its people. We should understand that while Hamas firing rockets into Israeli communities is absolutely unacceptable, today's conflict did not begin with those rockets. It goes much, much deeper. For years, we have seen a deepening Israeli occupation in the West Bank and East Jerusalem and a perpetual blockade on Gaza all of which makes life increasingly unbearable for the Palestinian people. The truth is, these policies, like this current war, will continue to strengthen, to strengthen extremists on both sides, including Hamas. I believe we must stand in solidarity with those Palestinians and Israelis working to build a future of equality and peaceful coexistence, and not with the intolerant extremists on either side who wish to destroy that future. In this moment of crisis, the United States should be urging an immediate ceasefire. If the United States is going to be a credible voice on human rights, on the global stage, we must recognize that Palestinian rights matter, Palestinian lives matter. 